Merry Christmas, everyone. Sorry, I'm not able to make it. I want to talk about disease prevention and treatment, which Rotary International states is a right. And uh, they believe that access uh, to basic health care is, is actually a right and important. And I'd like to talk about two projects that the Rotary Club of Downtown is involved with that does help with disease prevention. Um, the first one is in Uganda, and it's called Breaking the Silence. And it's a project that was started um, with the Water for Life project. And Mano and Kurt were leading it and uh, transitioned to me shortly after I joined Rotary. So Mano, Kurt, and I are, are huge partners in this project. Um, it is a project in Uganda with the Club of Kalisizo. Is it, a, it is a global grant where the Rotary Club of Calgary uh, invested $5,000 along with the Rotary Club of Chinook who invested another 5,000. And through matching grants, we now have a just shy of $100,000 US project. This project has been going on for the last year. We're coming up on our, our first year this, this week actually. And uh, Uganda has been actually going ahead with this project, Great Guns, um, through this past year, even with COVID. So what, what the project is, is a partnership with Days for Girls in Uganda, and it's uh, setting up businesses and training and educating the community in uh, the normal seas of menstruation. So the project so far has set up two, um, two businesses where, where people can, or the women can sew these, these Days for Girls kits, and as well, they're making soap. So there's sustainable businesses that will be going forward, and there's a business coach that will help them in the ways and means of how to manage and run a business, and that coach will, will help them over the next year to maintain that sustainability and keep those businesses going forward. So they're sewing and building these kits. And then there's been um, education in the community where 40 women have been trained in the Ambassador for Health program. And these women um, have been trained in, in the issues or areas of health and hygiene, puberty, menstruation, anatomy, safety and protection, as well as uh, sexually transmitted infections, sexual abuse and assault, uh, the reproductive system, family planning, and menstruation and the menstrual kit usage and care. So it's a broad pro program that is educating the community. Along with that, they've done a, a unique program called Men in the Know. And 50 men and all of them community leaders and healthcare workers have been trained on the same pieces um, and in helping support women through, through the normalcy of menstruation and the hygiene needed. So, Following that, once COVID has closed many of the schools there, once the schools reopen, these ambassadors for women's health will go in and, and train the kids in the schools as well as some of the parents and community leaders, and then distribute a lot of the packages and sanitary um, kits that, that the um, businesses are sewing. So through that, we've got a sustainable program that we will hope, hope to see uh, evolve over the coming years. This one will continue for the next year and uh, then we'll transition and see what happens after that. So we're excited about that. The community is excited about that and that's the most important thing. It's really neat to be on a Zoom call with Uganda and see how excited um, the crew is there about seeing this project move forward. Uh, so that's Days for Girls in Uganda. And the second project I would like to talk about is one that's wholly supported by the Rotary Club of Calgary Downtown. And it was the brainchild of Walter Hazel. Um, and it is uh, in partnership with an organization called the No Ordinary Journey Foundation. And I know many of you have heard of that. And what it does is head into various communities. Um, it's been to Vietnam and will soon be heading into um, Cambodia to educate caregivers and various, um, I want to say healthcare workers, but various trainees on how to care for kids with cerebral palsy. So what they do is go in and, and do a lot of treatment and care for these kids with cerebral palsy. 
And cerebral palsy is the number one disabling condition that kids can have. And what it does is, is often these kids are kept in their homes and, and are bedridden because they don't have the mobility aids and devices and support that they need to get out in the community. But with some of that support, um, they can be productive members of the community and get out, go to school. And as well, that, that enables some of their family members, especially the women, to, to get out and uh, be active members in the community. So this organization, we head into various communities and the Rotary Club, there's a Rotary Club in Australia that donates a bunch of wheelchairs. And we go in and we fit kids with wheelchairs and mobility devices, as well as educate families and caregivers on cerebral palsy and how to care for kids with cerebral palsy and how to encourage kids to get out into the community and go to school. So those are two very important projects on disease prevention that can really help lift up a community and um, really enable people to, to be healthy and lead productive lives. Thanks and have a Merry Christmas.